Japan Station is made possible in part by Patreon support. If you would like to make sure that I can keep bringing you more content like this, then head on over to japankyo.com slash Patreon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. Welcome to Japan Station, a production of japankyo.com. I'm your host, Tony Vega. All right, so we're just going to get right to the point today. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. I'm not going to ask you to leave a review. I'm not going to ask you to tell a friend about the show because if I do that, then, well, it's just going to take forever to get to the main part of the show and, and you're not going to be happy. So I, I just, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so let's just get right into it. So my guest today is wombat right that's not his real name <laughs> but wombat from japan trail cam so japan trail cam is this really fun twitter instagram youtube account where they post trail cam footage of the wilderness in japan and they get all kinds of fun videos of boars and raccoons and tanuki and uh, kitsune foxes uh, and deer and uh, some other stuff they're working on getting footage of bears for example um actually that might even be out by now i know they were waiting on on a camera that they had sent up to hokkaido but i uh, you know i i don't know if that's out yet maybe it is maybe it's not but either way you're gonna get to hear all about the stuff that they work on um it's two guys uh today you're gonna get to hear from wombat as i said um and it's a really fun conversation we also get into a little bit of hiking and weather and and some other stuff but anyway i think it's pretty fun and interesting stuff so hope you enjoy it here's my conversation with wombat from japan trail cam the next stop is japan station the doors on the right side will open Uh, okay, I think uh, everybody loves animals, so this is going to be a fun one, I think. <laughs> right? Yeah. And and your name is Wombat, apparently. Or, well, the name you go by. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I go by, Wombat. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess because I'm Australian. <laughs> wombat is an Australian animal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, did you, I, I, I mean, I, I have no idea why you would know this, but there's actually wombats. There's wild wombats in Hawaii, where I live. Oh, really? Yeah. So the story is, I've never seen one. I've never seen one. But the story is that a long time ago, I'm not sure how how long ago this was, probably within the past 50 or 60 years, maybe. But um, some wombats escaped from, I guess, the zoo. We we have one zoo, as far as I know. And uh, and then they ended up just kind of finding a place in, in like one of these a little bit more wild areas on, on the main island of Oahu. And uh, they're still around, apparently. I guess they still, you know, th- there's more of them. They, they, they're they still around. As far as I know, I've never seen one, though. Mm. Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, when I found this out, like, two years ago, I was like, oh, my God, I want to go find these wombats. I want to see these Hawaiian <laughs> wombats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should put up a trail sure. cam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I had a similar thing kind of happen here. I heard about these um, uh, these things called moot jacks. You ever oh, heard of a I, I don't, I've never heard of them. They um, where where they come from? They originally were from uh, Taiwan, but uh, they escaped from a zoo here in Japan uh-huh. and uh, ended up uh, living in the forest. So I set up trail camps to find them. Oh, uh, and what kind of what what do they look like? What are they? I say uh, it's a kind of like a like an antelope. Oh. It's like a mini deer. <laughs> it's oh, really, okay, okay. It's really cute. Yeah. Um, but actually, I don't live in the area that they escaped to. So um, uh, actually, I, I got a friend who lives in the area in Chiba. And oh. uh, he, he set up his trail camps and sent right. me the videos. Oh, okay. yeah, so, so did uh, and you actually capture them on, ca- on, ca- on camera? Yeah, you got all these uh, videos of them on trail cam. It's really interesting. Oh, so man. yeah, we kind of did like a collab. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um and then, well, just going off the kind of invasive species kind of thing, I guess, like raccoons are also like a big invasive species in Japan that, oh, I mean, the yeah. story goes, right, that there was this popular anime in like the 70s or something, like Little Rascal or Rascal. I forgot what the exact name was. And so yeah, people started right. like buying raccoons and then they were like, oh, no, these are not pets. And then they like, you know, let them go. And now they're all running around crazy, destroying things in Japan. Exactly. And there's yeah. so many, so many around my area. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I've seen I've seen a few videos of yours with raccoons. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so yeah, we'll we'll get back into the Japan Trail Camp thing in in a moment, but I, I want to learn a little bit more about you. So, like, how did you end up? You, I I think you're in the Kita Kyushu area or Fukuoka area. Yes, I'm in uh, Fukuoka Prefecture, uh, right. a kind of a, a rural part of Fukuoka Prefecture, mm-hmm. not a big city. Mm-hmm. So what what area. took you to Japan and and that area specifically? Uh, well, I uh, got married in Australia to a Japanese woman, mm-hmm. and uh, we lived a few years in Australia. But then uh, she wanted to uh, move back to Japan, so we, uh, we packed up our stuff and moved over here. Ended up uh, living in her hometown. Oh, okay. In Fukuoka Prefecture, so that's where I've been the whole time. Gotcha. Yeah, so it was just uh yeah, just uh all because of her, I guess. <laughs> mm, okay. Thanks to her. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I've I've been to Fukuoka a bunch of times. Um yeah, I've I've been to Kita Kyushu, I've been to uh you know Hakata and, and around um just Kyushu in general too a bunch of yeah, times. Yeah, great place. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um what's that? In like? fact, mm-hmm. I've actually never been to Tokyo. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I've been in Japan so many years but i've never been to tokyo it's <laughs> just kind of stuck in kyushu which yeah. i don't mind yeah 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 i mean like it's it's closer you know easier from osaka or kyoto you know it's just like a four-hour bullet train from um, kyushu yeah. it's a little bit more annoying but you you, you should definitely check it out someday <laughs> i will i will one day i'm sure <laughs> <Get around laughs> that. I'm not really a city city kind of guy. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Tokyo's pretty crazy. Like, I love Tokyo, but I wouldn't want to live there. Um, you know, uh-huh. honestly, yeah, I was like, I, I like Kyoto, Kobe. Like, that's enough city for me usually. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, right, sure. nice middle. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. So then, so you end up going to this uh kind of more rural area of of Fukuoka. But were you yeah. already into kind of nature and, and hiking and all that before you moved to Japan? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, in Australia, I was, uh, yeah, I enjoyed uh, hiking, uh, looking at wildlife. So, mm-hmm. of course, when I came to Japan, I wanted to check out the mountains, mm-hmm. uh, go hiking. Uh, that's what I did uh, most weekends. Uh, yeah, that, I guess that's where it kind of started. Mm-hmm. Um, I just hiking in the mountains, I guess, just hiking the animals we see the most are probably in my area, a uh, wild boar and deer. Mm-hmm. So I'd get glimpses of them uh, in my hikes, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious. I wanted to see more, like what's mm-hmm. in these mountains. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of where it started. I, I bought my first trail cam, set it up in a mountain uh, near my house. And, uh, yeah, I had no idea how it was going to go, no idea what I'd see. But yeah. uh, after about a week, I collected it, and I saw a Japanese hare. Oh, and uh, yeah, the mo- moment I saw it, I thought, "Yeah, this is this is going to be something." I'm gonna. I got hooked, you know. Uh, just <laughs> yeah. a just a rabbit, just a Japanese hare. But mm-hmm. it was uh, so cool to see that in my local mountain. And then I, I saw a wild boar, and after that, you know, of course, many things. But yeah, that really all kicked it off. Just that initial curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even if it's like, like okay, so. I've been to Nara a bunch of times and Hiroshima a bunch of times. And there's, you know, places where you can go and like the, the deer are like right there. Right. And it's fun right. and it's cool and all. But like when you see like a, a deer just like actually in, in nature and like it kind of glances at you for a second and then runs away. It's like, whoa, I just saw something weird, like something special, you know, like yeah. it's, it's a whole different thing. Right. It's like yeah, totally. you weren't supposed to see that almost. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And it's really memorable. It's you don't forget that kind of um that situation. So yeah, and um, and it's different seeing on trail camp too. Like, mm-hmm. uh, of course, I can watch uh, better quality quality videos of uh, wildlife, uh, you know, uh, documentaries and that kind of stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, getting the videos myself of the the animals in my local area and uh, seeing them, like, uh, kind of like in their, of course, they're in the natural environment, but. Uh, there's no, no people around kind of it's kind of like spying on them you know it so is, it is yeah natural behavior. it's so in, like i've been like i said i was watching a bunch of them and yeah it obviously it, i mean they're animals they're not people so it's, it's a different dynamic but still it's like the way that you're 
you're just watching them like root around in the ground or like, you know, uh-huh. eating something or, and it's like, it's, it's so, yeah, it's like, I'm, again, like, it's like, you're seeing something that you're not supposed to be seeing. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's really cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. They're, they're obviously, they're just completely oblivious to the fact that they're being filmed, but it, it's just something, you know, fun about seeing, like, th- there's this one that really stuck in my mind where it was like, uh, it was a uh, Inoshi, um, what's it called? Like a wild boar. And it was like mm. rooting around in the ground, right? It's like, just like, it would stick yeah. its snout in and then just like, like kick really? off the, the, the ground. And right, right. Like there's been so many times where like, not, not just in Japan, but you know, maybe somewhere else, you know, you're walking around in the woods and you see like something that's been dug up and you wonder like, oh, I wonder what, what that could have been. Like, I wonder what animal did that. I wonder why they were doing that. Yeah. And it's like, oh it probably was something like this. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, oh, here, here exactly. is what did it. <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been a fantastic uh, learning experience to like seeing that kind of thing. Then uh, next time going out in the mountains and seeing the, you know, tracks and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, the dug up dirt and, oh, I know where that is now. And yeah, yeah it's, yeah. and it makes it easier uh, to find uh, great places to set trail camps, uh, learning mm-hmm. more and more like uh, signs of wildlife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, so, how how exactly did because I know you you work with somebody else uh, Dan uh-huh, and, right. and you guys work together on this but so how did it get started and how when when did you guys start this right so um, it was I'd been hiking for years in Japan and uh, I had a, a different YouTube channel just uh, about hiking okay uh, basically just making videos for my family back home but um, so the the first time I got a trail cam and I set it up. I put that video on YouTube and I had a friend uh, in, also in Fukuoka who had a different YouTube channel and I talked to him about the trail cam mm. and I thought uh, maybe this video, this kind of video is a bit different to my hiking videos. So maybe I should start a new channel. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he was really enthusiastic about it. And he said, well, why don't I, I help you out, get some, buy some uh, more trail cams and we do a thing together. So that's uh, yeah, kind of how it happened about, two years ago now i think a couple yeah. of years ago and i guess since then we just bought more and more trail cams <laughs> kind of an addiction yeah and yeah so we both have trail cams set up around fukuoka and uh a few around japan yeah oh wow so Other parts. i i think like uh you guys are going out pretty much every weekend and either picking up cams or or putting them out is that, is that how yeah. it goes yeah for sure so um myself how many cams do I have now? I have about six or seven uh-huh. trail cams. Yeah. Uh, so every week I check at least one. Yeah. Uh, so that gives me about, uh, you know, three or four weeks, depending um, on of footage from the mm-hmm. trail cam, which is plenty to put out a video. Yeah. So always uh, yeah, collecting clips. And mm-hmm. I've also got uh, cameras in other parts of Japan that, uh, people are helping out setting up mm. so uh for example i've got a trail cam now in hokkaido mm. uh, wow. one in yamagata yeah mm-hmm. a few different places wow um, yeah. so okay so and, and these cameras are i believe like they have infrared sensors and and so they only turn on when they sense movement is that, is that how right works? right so um yeah the kind of yeah the sensor cameras so mm-hmm. they're only going to record when something is uh, moving in front of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have uh, infrared light. So at night, it can record uh, video, but it's mm-hmm. in black and white. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, yeah. Oh, sorry. And then you leave them out for like a month or so? Like how, how long? Yeah, it depends. If I've set up in a, a new area that I'm not sure about, I might check it sooner. Mm-hmm. But yeah, usually two to four weeks. Uh, camera is out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, all right. So then, so wh- where do you go then? Like, I guess, do you like find trails and then you tr- kind of go off the trails and try to like find good spots? Like, what, what, where are you dropping these off? Yeah, right. Well, um, when I first started, actually, I'd go off trail and really deep into the mountains Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, i found that you don't actually need to do that Uh, there are animals just absolutely everywhere Mm -hmm. so i just uh, stick to the main trail and then looking to the side of the main trail i find uh, animal 
animal trails, like small, small trails and tracks. And I'll mm-hmm. follow that for for a while until I see something interesting or mm-hmm. I see some signs of life, maybe some droppings or something like that, and mm-hmm. then set up a camera there. So I'm not going uh, too deep. You don't have to to get uh, lots of great footage of wildlife. Mm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, watching um, the surroundings, uh, broken branches, uh, tracks or droppings, that kind of thing, looking out for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And and then like I, I was listening to an interview that Dan, the, the other guy that you work with on, on this, yeah. uh, that he did. And he was talking about like you like to find watering holes, basically, like because that's where a lot of these animals gather. Sure. Yeah. Water is uh, yeah, always a great spot. So um, watering holes or wallows. Mm-hmm. So um, not exactly water, but mud, mm-hmm. like really okay. wet mud where wild boar like to you know um, take a mud bath. Mm-hmm. Those are always uh, fantastic spots. We always get some good footage there. So, um, yeah, of course, you know, that kind of thing is not uh, written on a map or anything. You've got to go out and find it. So it could I could spend, you know, an hour just wandering around the forest and then stumble across uh, a great wallow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not always a, a great tree to attach the camera to. So it's um, the conditions are going to be right. But uh, recently, I'm using uh, tripods to stuck into the ground with the trail cameras mm. at Wallows to get uh, yeah good close up shots. Mm. Um, so the past several years, I know Kyushu has had like some really bad like rain. Um, in usually mm. it's around the summer, like June, Juneish, Julyish. Um, has 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 that has that impacted like how, how you go out um and like you know your, your footage have you have you lost any cameras like has, has that had any impact uh, i almost lost the camera uh due to flood but uh-huh. uh it was uh just above the waterline it was safe oh. <laughs> but uh yeah usually they're fine so even uh-huh. during typhoons we uh-huh. we leave them out and uh they're really hardy they're, wow. they're waterproof um yeah i've never had one fail on me uh they get pretty wet. Wow. I had uh, one cam that was um, dragged off by a wild boar. One really? Time. Yeah, it was interesting to see uh-huh. the video. Um, but uh, yeah, it was fine too. So they get really rough with them. Raccoons love to attack my cameras. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, but they, they, they're they always fine. So yeah, yeah, typhoon, heavy rain. Yeah, no problem. Oh, I guess yeah, they, they get curious. They must like, hey, what is this? And then they like walk off because there's no food, basically. <laughs> they, they do. They do. It depends on the, the kind of animal too. So right. um, raccoons, yeah, they're really curious. So they'll yeah. see something that wasn't there before. They they want to you know touch it, uh, yeah. sniff it, that kind of thing. And, you know, I had one raccoon actually manage to swing the camera around the other side of the tree. Oh. It was really interesting. And actually um, moved it to a better position. So I had to thank the raccoon for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Funny. But then um, like uh, tanakis, which are raccoon what? dogs, yeah. they they look like such a similar animal. They're quite, actually quite different. But, yeah. you know, similar size. Uh, they look similar. But, you know, they usually have no interest in the cameras whatsoever. Uh-huh. They might just have a, a quick look and just walk straight past. So oh. it depends on the animal. Interesting. Okay. Um so what are what are some of the animals that that you tend to capture? I mean, I guess you know we we said like there's there's deer, right? There's the raccoons. Um, yeah, what else? it it really depends on the area. Mm-hmm. Um, at the moment, I have uh, one camera uh, set up uh, in a place called Inunaki. It's a, it's supposedly a haunted spot, actually, a oh, haunted uh-huh. forest. But uh, I have a camera there because there are just so many deer. Last time I checked the camera, there were like uh, over a hundred deer clips and only wow. deer. Um, and then, you know, other areas I'll get uh, wild boar. I guess, yeah, the main uh, deer, wild boar, raccoons, tanuki, mm-hmm. and uh, marten, get a lot of marten. Mm. And uh, badgers, yeah, lots of badgers as mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. Japanese badgers. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it depends, like my setup. So mm-hmm. I, I had uh, one camera set up right in front of a badger set mm-hmm. so of course uh, that camera it's only gonna get badges sure. basically uh mm-hmm. so yeah it depends on like where it is if it's at a wallow uh you know deer forest that kind of thing 
Mm-hmm. That just, is that an Itachi, I think, in Japanese? Is that... No, uh, Itachi is a, a weasel. Uh, uh-huh. A ba- badger is anaguma. Anaguma, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They they really they really look similar to the European badger, just uh, mm. more of a brown color. Oh, uh, okay. But they're really interesting to watch too. The way they walk, kind of waddle along. Mm. Uh, yeah, I had a, a really cute clip of a badger doing a somersault that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I like the badgers. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, and what about like some more like rare ones some some uncommon things that that you've you've captured sure sure um so in my area of uh kyushu there actually there are no bears at all Uh, they're extinct in kyushu but uh, we really wanted a bear on the channel so uh, we knew a guy up in um uh iwate and we Mm -hmm. sent him a camera and uh, Mm -hmm. he got us a bear which was a really cool a black bear Mm -hmm. so we have one bear on the, nice. the channel but hopefully more in the future but uh other than that um some interesting birds uh we got this uh i can't remember the exact name it's a, it's a cra- it's a night it's a ca- some kind of night heron and right. they are they're a threatened species oh, uh, in Kyushu, okay. which was uh really cool to catch on camera mm-hmm. uh the rare one not not exactly rare, but mm-hmm. we can go a long time without getting any Japanese macaques, monkeys. Oh, but really? then suddenly one trail can pick up, there'll be hundreds on the camera. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess they, they move around in big troops, big I groups. Guess, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if we're lucky, a troop will um, pass through the area uh-huh. and we'll just get so many videos of monkeys playing and, and uh, drinking and that stuff, that kind of stuff, which is really cool. Nice. So you yeah. said you also had a camera up in Hokkaido. Like, what what do you what do you see up in Hokkaido? Well, uh, we haven't got that one back yet. So oh, okay. um, <laughs> I'm uh, yeah really excited about what we can get there. Yeah. But hopefully, uh, the guy who's got the camera he's uh, he's actually a, a nature guide, uh, so uh-huh. he knows some great places. Ooh. So we're hoping to get uh, maybe some some brown bears. Yeah. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of the unique uh, wildlife in Hokkaido. So anything different, uh, we're really excited about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah definitely. Um, so what about like um, like any particularly like memorable or I don't know, something popular or, or whatever, like are anything interesting particularly to you uh, of, of all these videos that you've captured over the past like couple years? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, memorable. I really like uh, this one clip. It's over in like a couple of seconds, but uh, I sometimes we don't know like why what why the camera is triggered. Looks mm-hmm. like there's nothing in the clip. Yeah. So I'm watching, watching. There's nothing there. Then suddenly, just looks like out of the sky, a marten just kind of drops down. <laughs> yeah. Where did, where did this marten come from? So it just kind of it drops down. Uh, looks a bit frazzled and then just kind of gets up and uh, runs away but, uh, <laughs> just kind of dropped out of the sky so that was uh that was pretty oh, memorable yeah. <laughs> but uh one of my favorite um my video my favorite videos is uh when i took a camera to oita prefecture uh-huh. uh there's a mountain there called uh, mount takasaki yeah takasaki yama and it's uh, famous for a a monkey park Oh, I, so, I I I think I just saw that video today. <laughs> oh, really? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. So, continue, continue. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a famous uh, monkey park there where um they have there's a park where staff uh, feed uh wild monkeys that come down from the mo- mountain. So uh, the the monkeys they don't live in the park; they live in the mountain. But they come down. Uh, I think it's uh, twice a day uh, mm-hmm. to get some feed. But on the other side of the mountain, there's a hiking trail. So I set up a camera there. And I got footage of a, uh, a Japanese uh, macaque troop mm-hmm. uh, with a, a monkey called Yake, who mm-hmm. uh, was um, recently New York Times uh, article because uh, she became the monkey boss. And it's right. kind of rare for a female boss of the troop. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that, was a, that was a big thing. And uh, it was great to see her and her troop on my trail camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I love always love seeing the monkeys. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. The the title of that video was something like Japanese Monkey Queen or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly the one that I saw this today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that, that. That's that's cool. That's cool. Huh. But also, um, anytime that uh two different kind of animals are in the same shot, I always oh. find that really interesting. Yeah. Um I have a video where uh Tanuki and a raccoon have a little bit of a scuffle. <laughs> a bit of a fight. Uh-huh. Another one where where Dia is checking out Tanuki, kind of leaning down, sniffing it a little. That kind of thing is really interesting. Usually, yeah. the, the an, different an, kinds of animals they um tend to stay away from each other. They mm-hmm. don't want to get into fights. You know, it's a waste of energy. But mm-hmm. you know, on the rare occasion, yeah, we see that, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or it's like those videos where it's like. A puppy and a frog are getting together for some reason. Like, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. the internet loves those things, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's always fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now what about like when you're like going up to set these up or collect these cameras or looking for a spot? Do you run into these animals? Have you ever had any, I don't know, scary experiences or no- notable uh, experiences? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um Sometimes when I check the cameras, so I check them in the field mm-hmm. and I noticed that the last video recorded was just a couple of minutes before I arrived, <laughs> which is uh, always pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, like oh, there was a deer here just uh, a couple of minutes ago. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so my partner, Dan, uh, mm-hmm. one time uh, he was on a trail and he came across a Japanese macaque mm-hmm. and uh, seen a completely um, wild area. So seeing a seeing a monkey, a macaque in a monkey park and seeing one in the wild is yeah. quite different, right? The mm-hmm. ones in the park are kind of accustomed to uh, human contact mm-hmm. or seeing humans. But uh, this one, completely wild. It was pretty aggressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a bit of a scary moment for him. Uh, but uh, for me, I, I run into wild boar quite a mm-hmm. bit. And uh, usually it's fine. They'll see you and they'll just they'll take off right mm-hmm. they don't want anything to do with you uh one time i didn't have much time it was a, it was bad weather mm-hmm. uh it was dark it was early morning it was raining but i really wanted to check a camera i probably shouldn't have but <laughs> I, I went off up the mountain yeah and uh i couldn't see well i had a, a headlamp on yeah but uh, i heard this kind of sound like almost like growling yeah and i was like what is that i thought maybe i'm just imagining it so i kept going up but uh yeah i heard it again and then i heard this this noise like something moving and it really freaked me out like it was dark and it was raining so yeah, uh, yeah I, it's I, a horror I, movie kind of like <laughs> ran back down to the car yeah. um but uh, i think that was that was a wild boar um yeah. but uh, yeah usually the animals here yeah, no problem uh not dangerous at all because they see you and they take off yeah one sniff of me of my stinky self and yeah (laughs) they're off down the trail there was yeah there's there was a couple of times where there was a wild boar on the trail right in front of me it sees me and it takes off in the exact direction that i want to go oh and um so i'm kind of following it Uh i don't want to but i want to go that way yeah and uh, what wild boar do is they'll take off but only short distance yeah, they'll they'll run off and then stop, and then look back and check if the um, danger is gone, and they'll go back on. So what happened here was it take off, and I'd follow it and I see it again. And it'll take off again. It's just kind of following it bit by bit, <laughs> which was uh, it was kind of funny. Huh. Yeah, um, you know, like often there's like signs, you know, beware of of the you know she the the boars and all that. And, you know, I, yeah, I you know there there dangerous. are occasionally times when when they do attack people. Like, do, is there something that you would recommend somebody to do in, in that sort of situations? Like, stay away, like run away, or like stay still, like anything. What What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think um, seeing a wild boar in a town or a city is uh, probably more dangerous than seeing them in the forest. Mm-hmm. In the forest, they've got uh, so much opportunity to run away. They can run away anywhere. But in a town or a city, they might be lost or disorientated right. and uh, panicked. Yeah. And that's uh, that's where it can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that situation, just uh, 
be quiet, back away slowly. But um, mm-hmm. uh, in the forest, it just it just never happens unless you've got uh, a wild boar cornered somehow where right. it has has no way to escape. Mm-hmm. In that situation, it could be dangerous and it, and it could attack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, if it has a place to escape, it will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, bears, you know, bears is a completely different story, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, which thankfully is something I don't have to deal with here in Kyushu. <laughs> right. But uh, for uh, yeah, other areas, it's recommended to wear a bell, a bear bell. bell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the scissors, so when you're right, hiking, yeah. yeah, just uh, let them know you're coming. Have some kind of noise, yeah. mm-hmm. especially if you're if you're hiking alone. Mm-hmm. Um, making some noise uh, keeps uh, the animals away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh... So what, what about like um, for anybody that's uh, heading, let's say, to the Kyushu area and wants to go check out some trails or anything like, is there uh, any places that you would recommend that, that come to mind? Sure. Um, well, in Fukuoka, mm-hmm. in Fukuoka Prefecture, uh, there we have some great mountains here. Uh, one of my local mountains, uh, Mount Fukuchi, is mm-hmm. always a great hike. So many trails um, there. And uh, always good chance of running into a badger. Lots of badgers <laughs> there. Mm-hmm. And um, but probably the most popular mountain in Fukuoka is Mount Homan, uh, mm-hmm. Homanzan, which is Dazaifu area, which is such a beautiful area. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's they have the Dazaifu Tenmangu Shrine, which mm-hmm. is so beautiful. Yeah. And uh, the mountain yeah, is, is fantastic there. Uh, but uh, other parts of Kyushu, yeah, definitely check out Oita Prefecture. Uh, I mentioned that uh, Takasaki Yama. It's mm-hmm. a small mountain, but yeah, it's a nice mountain, and the the monkey park is really good. So mm-hmm. I check out that. Other than that, uh, Kumamoto Prefecture, uh, yeah, Oita Prefecture, the Kuju Mountain Range is yeah so beautiful. Kuju, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. so many trails, some high mountains there. Definitely mm-hmm. check out that. Uh, Mount Aso is mm-hmm. a, a volcano uh, in Kumamoto, which is has some fantastic hiking there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh yeah. So I've done all my hiking basically in Kyushu, so I can only recommend places in Kyushu. But yeah, yeah. I think anywhere in Japan, Japan is so mountainous. Mm-hmm. Uh, anywhere you are, just uh, like a short bus trip or a car trip, you can be in the mountains and yeah, have a have a great time in nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, even in Kobe, which is you know the. It's it's a city. It's it's a pretty decent sized city. There there's a few mountains like right right there. Like I I've climbed up uh, Mount Rocco, Rocco, yeah, yeah. which is is right there. It's like basically right in the city, and it's so easy to get to. So usually yeah, it's, it's really easy to find one. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, mm-hmm. um, you can uh, you can get into nature really quickly, uh, really mm-hmm. soon. Even if you lived in Fukuoka City, just a a train ride to a, a mountain like a Tenpai Zone is really good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. Um, what, what about like seasons? Um, like for example, I, I I mean, what what's the best time of year, personally for you? What do you think? Right now, right now is really good. Um, oh, okay, so f- like fall, it's fall. it's not it's not super cold yet, but it's not like crazy humid and hot anymore. Exactly. Well, I uh, I hike all seasons. Um, mm-hmm. I don't mind the hot weather, but mm-hmm. I know many people avoid middle of summer because it, it gets so stinking hot um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh but i i don't mind it uh i'm a little adverse to the cold i don't like the cold mm-hmm. and uh but for trail cams i like the winter a uh, bit of snow on the ground it's easier mm-hmm. to see tracks um mm-hmm. so i can uh find good spots for cameras mm-hmm. but all oh, oh, or all year round, I think um, I enjoy hiking and you know seeing the landscape change, mm-hmm. uh, seeing the snow or different flowers pop up. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, right now it's a uh, perfect uh, weather. I think uh, mm-hmm. clear days, it's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, not too hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so fall is probably best. Do you, Do you see like a difference in in the kinds of animals that are out like during the year, or is it more or less the same? Yeah, yeah, we do see a bit of a difference um for example we'll see less uh tanuki during the winter because they kind of uh semi-hibernate mm. and um oh it's, it's also interesting seeing different times of year like uh seeing the uh the breeding the mating season of the wild boar always get different mm. um kind of behaviors 
mm. uh, which is yeah always cool to see. Right now mm. it's um, the rut season for deer, oh, yeah. So um, getting more like, deer fights and uh, yeah, I, I was watching one of those yesterday. I think one of your videos where two deers were going at it, like they were you know wrestling with their antlers. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing is really cool. Um, so yeah, this season right now I have a camera in a place, uh, like I mentioned before, in Inunaki Forest where there's so many deer. Mm-hmm. So I, I put it there spe- specifically for this season just to see that kind of behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, different seasons um, always see something different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and then, um, so I know, you know, Hokkaido, you wanted to get, you know, a, a capture a a bear on film from Hokkaido but is there any other um is there something that you've been trying to capture on film that you would love to get that you're trying to get or that one day you would hope to you know be able to capture on film anything you can think of yes yes absolutely um I have a a full list somewhere but um (laughs) uh, off the top of my head um we would love to get a cero oh what's that a cero is it's kind of kind of like a like a mountain goat i guess oh. um like a cross between a deer and a goat um okay. in the, in japanese it's called a kamoshika oh i've okay i've heard the japanese name okay. right yeah in the japanese name it has a it's kamoshika but chika is deer but it's not yeah. a deer mm-hmm. uh so the name is a bit confusing mm-hmm. but uh, unfortunately um in kyushu they're only in a small part of kyushu which is very far from me oh. uh but uh I uh, I was uh, contacted by uh, a guy in another part of Japan who said um, he has the, uh, Cero in mm-hmm. his part of Japan. So I sent him a camera. So at the moment, it's there hoping to get some Cero. Nice. But yeah, that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, um, Hakubishin. Hakubishin. Uh, sorry, that's a Japanese word. English is uh, civet, palm civet. Okay, yeah. Again, I've heard the Japanese name, but I, yeah, that's one of those English names. I was like, I've never heard of it. <laughs> right? They're, yeah. they're actually uh, they're an invasive species, but uh-huh. again, not in my area. But uh, hopefully, one day you actually see them um, in the streets oh. in uh, some major cities. Oh, so wow. I've seen you know videos of them like uh, climbing along power lines and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd like to yeah, get some video of them. <laughs> They're like from Southeast Asia originally. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, I, I've read about them at, at some point. Yeah. So we do get uh, evasive species on camera, and uh, you know, of course, I guess that's not a good thing. Evasive mm-hmm. species are not a good thing. Yeah. But uh, it's still it's fun to see them and uh, their yeah. behavior as well. You know, it's not their fault they're here. Yeah, I mean they're there. You know, like you're not you're not doing anything. You're just capturing on film. It's 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 right. there. Like. <laughs> that's the reality <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's right oh. oh that's that's great that's great um okay so uh i i you guys are on youtube right but you also mm. upload clips to uh twitter and instagram yeah that's right so um it started off the the main thing was youtube mm. uh we'd uh we started off putting up two videos a week on YouTube. Uh, now we put up just uh, one every weekend, mm-hmm. uh, quite a long video on YouTube. But uh, for Twitter and Instagram, we put up like short, shorter videos, like uh, like thirty second long video or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, different audience on Twitter. So, yeah. but I really enjoy uh, Twitter uh, mm-hmm. for our uh, what do you call it? Our our content. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really fun uh, getting comments and yeah, yeah spreading um, information about Japanese wildlife on Twitter. Uh, YouTube is more like uh, longer videos, like 10, 15 minute videos where people yeah. can just uh, relax and enjoy mm-hmm. wildlife. Yeah, and also like it, it's a different way of consuming, right? Like, like for example, I I I see you guys on Twitter, and so like I'll see your videos pop up and I'll watch it. But it's like YouTube, it's it's that's your kind of uh, archive, right? So it's like, oh, I want to go back to this video. Like maybe you can look it up and find it easily. But on Twitter, it's like once it's gone, it's kind of like, oh my god, I have to scroll back two years to find that thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's more yeah, in yeah. the moment, but it's also like less effort. Sometimes YouTube is like it's there, so if you want to find it, it's there too. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's important to have both, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, both are fun. I I enjoy uh, doing that. Um, yeah, we have Instagram too as well, mm-hmm. but probably not quite as active on Instagram. But uh, yeah. I guess the, the main thing is YouTube, and then you should, uh, you should consider uh, TikTok. <laughs> yeah, well, 
I, I, I know, like I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it either. I'm so like, oh, I don't want to <laughs> have to handle another platform. But yeah. your short form content is like perfect for that. Yeah, I thought about. I actually, I think I probably do. I have a account. I just, yeah. I don't really use it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I get. I, I get should. I should. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's the the vert- vertical format. Uh, it's difficult for our videos gotcha 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 but uh i probably should put more effort into that yeah yeah the animals are like no no we're not into tiktok it's like no no (laughs) we draw the line at tiktok (laughs) 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 oh that's great that's great okay so uh so of course japan trail cam i think the twitter handle is at japan trail cam right that's right yeah Yeah. is the instagram the same thing Yep, should be yep at Japan okay. Trail, Cam. and then the YouTube channel is Japan Trail Cam as well. Japan Trail Cam, yep, that's uh, it. Nice, you got you got it on point there. Everything's easy to remember. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you so much. It was it was really fun to to learn about all all you do. So guys, check out Japan Trail Cam if you want to see all these videos we were talking about. Go check it out, Japan Trail Cam. Nice and easy to find. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you so much. I had a blast uh, talking to you, Tony. Thank you. Just do it!